Great. Okay. Gretchen, I'll handle the waiting room. Um, you get Perfect. people welcomed in. Because I can go ahead and start with the first slide. Um, we can just keep putting the link in the chat box maybe. And then if anybody wants to type in the chat box, just as kind of a getting to know you quick thing, what you teach and your favorite part of winter break. We'd love to hear from you for a few minutes. Alarm clock, yes, <laughs> love it. Katie, what kind of cookies were you eating? Losing track of time, I love it. <laughs> no, fantastic, yes. Yes, chance to reset. Yeah, it's taking me some time to kind of get back on track. Wake up to alarm again. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so we are so glad you are all here. And um, our presentation is called No Camera, No Problem. Um, and if you notice what we just did is we were sort of creating a space for you all to kind of get to know each other, get to know us just by using chat box. So with or without camera, we are already creating community. We are already starting to chat and um, do some icebreakers. All right, let's go, let's dive in. Perfect. And for anyone who just came in and missed it, you can follow this link to kind of follow along with our Pear Deck. I'll have some activities as we go. So we have a, a, a brief presentation, 30 minutes, but what we hope to cover um, is why it's so important to give students the choice of whether or not to use their camera in a Zoom synchronous session. So whether that might be um, class session, office hours, um, whatever, whatever virtual setting you've created synchronously, uh, we know that you know, not all students use their camera. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we have some useful language that you could use, whether it's in your syllabus or before um, any synchronous session, you could have it on a Google slide or you could have it on your Canvas page. Um, that kind of helps to create that comfortable space for students. And then we have a couple of tools, which you're going to notice we are actually using them, you know, throughout the presentation. And we have a, a handy cheat sheet for you guys on Canvas, and we'll, we'll share it today as well, um, because we won't be able to get too in-depth with the tools, but you'll, you'll see them in action as we go. Okay, so this language, um, again, I've, we've put it on a Google Doc that is on the Canvas page already for Catalyst, and then share this Google Doc with you guys um, in just a minute. Um, but this is just something you could use to sort of set the tone uh, for your students in terms of camera usage before you even have your first synchronous session to kind of um, let them know what you expect and if they can't use their camera why it's okay. So we're also using this language for you today. You know, we encourage you to use your camera in this session right now if you feel comfortable because we love to see your faces, right? It's a fabulous group. However, if turning on your camera won't work for you today, that's all right. Um, there's plenty of ways you're going to be able to participate, connect with your peers. We're going to be using chat box. You could just use your microphone and you can use the emoji reactions do a thumbs up yes no you know that's another way to engage um, and if you want to use your camera but you're hesitant thinking i don't really want to be on camera today remember you have some options right if you have lots of noise in your house like i often do i have two little ones two dogs uh, it's a whole farm here so um i often mute my microphone sometimes even when i'm presenting right <laughs> just because you never know um you're having a bad hair day, that's fine, right? We're just happy that you can be here with us so we can learn together. Um, you can also use a virtual background. Um, I like Allison's background, that's pretty cool. Um, so we only see you and not your pile of dirty laundry. Although I don't really care if your pile of dirty laundry is there, you're more than welcome to share that with us as well, but you have options. And this is something that you could cut and paste, feel free to share it, borrow it, edit it, and use it for your students. Awesome.
Okay, so for those of you that have had a chance to join on Pear Deck, we would love to hear from you. Um, the first one is just about why do we want students to participate using their cameras? So we'd love to just hear your thoughts about this. Um, on Pear Deck, you should be able to just type in your answer and we'll all be able to kind of see it together. So are you displaying something you're sharing screen with all of the answers, but when we enter them, we only see ours? That's correct. Yes, that's correct. So you could actually hide the responses and have it on just your own screen if you want to kind of moderate what people are seeing, or you can kind of show for everybody what they're seeing. And I have this on anonymous view right now, so you didn't have to sign in with your name. You could just type what you'd like to. Um, I think I was like an anonymous water buffalo earlier. <laughs> so you just have an animal. Um, yeah, and we can kind of see each other up here. So if you've just joined us, um, we're using a really cool tool called Pear Deck, which allows you to follow along the presentation, um, but also interact in, in real time. And so we're seeing everyone's answers on Gretchen's shared screen, um, but you can also have it in another window. Awesome. Love it. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we had a lot of the same thoughts. Um, so some things we were thinking about is that, yeah, we're tired of the pandemic. Um, maybe many of us wish that we were back in person and having the cameras on kind of stimulates that a little bit. Um, we wish all our students would turn on the cameras. So we know they're engaged and can build community. I noticed that in a few answers, right? Seeing their faces helps us gauge their engagement. Um, and it's difficult staring at a sea of blank screens all day it can feel isolating as the teacher. Yeah, and you may or may not be having these conversations in your own departments. I know my department is having a lot of discussion about this, um, whether or not we should be requiring our students to have their cameras on so that we can build that community so that we feel like they're engaged, they're getting the material, they are paying attention, whatever it might be. So absolutely, we get it, right? This is, this is why we really like to have our students or whoever's participating have their camera on. We do want to also think about the other perspective. So the next question is why might students not want to be on camera? Yeah, I love these. I think we're looking at all kinds of different aspects of this. I think for me, getting to wear pajama bottoms is one plus of being on Zoom all the time. 
Um, but there are times that maybe you just don't feel up to putting on a nice shirt or um, yeah, bad hair day, creed, creed. Thank you everyone for sharing. Yeah, it's, um, we, we really want to be able to see our students, but uh, it's a lot more equitable, I think, to, to give students that choice for all of the reasons that you posted on Pear Deck. Um, they might be dealing with trauma. They might wanna keep their living space private for a host of reasons. They might be really stressed out. You know, one day they might be fine. You might have a student who's on camera who's, you know, wanting to be on camera. And then the next time they show up, they want to mute their camera. And we just don't necessarily know why. Um, some days are going to be far more stressful than others, especially with everything that's going on right now with this pandemic and with the state of our, our country as well. So, I mean, there's also equity issues in terms of gender, right? There's a lot more pressure for women to have their hair a certain way, wear makeup. Um, so that's to, to take into consideration as well, that they may just not want to show their face on camera um, that day. So it's really important to allow them to, to have that choice. We've got a cool resource that helped inspire this presentation. The next slide. Um, so there's a really great article and um, there's a lot of um, a lot of the notions that helped us to come up with this presentation came from that article and I'll share that with you in just a minute. But there's a lot of us who are also guilty of not having our cameras on. I mean, even, even today, um, we're encouraging you to have that choice if you don't feel comfortable or if you're just not into it today, that's totally fine. Um, and so I think a lot of us are grateful when we aren't called out by others in a meeting, whether it's a, a department meeting or, or maybe the guided pathways meeting that I just went to today, I'd say about half the people had their camera off, right? And so we really appreciate when we're given that choice, that option, that space where, you know, we share when we want to. And, and so I think why not extend that same courtesy to our students? Um, this is a time especially that calls for radical compassion for everyone. You know, we appreciate it when people extend that to us. Um, and if we're truly committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, then it really should apply to our, our synchronous sessions, our time on Zoom, um, that virtual space with our students as well. So this is the article um, and you're welcome to, to click on the link in your Pear Deck uh, and I will also share it in the chat. Uh, but there's a great article that came out last semester by Karen Costa called Cameras Be Damned. Um, she makes really good points. Um, a lot of what you already mentioned, maybe some of you are familiar with this article already uh, about what's going on in students' lives, why they may or may not be you know, showing their, their face that day, showing their space, um, using their camera. Um, but something to consider, and she makes really great points about just because their cameras are on it doesn't necessarily mean that they are engaged, right? We kind of associate someone staring at the camera as they must be paying attention. But she gives this great anecdote about going to a conference. Um, it's a two-day conference. And, and one of the days she had her camera on and she's, she's staring at the presenter the entire time, but she's reflecting on that experience saying, I actually really wasn't paying attention. I had so many things going on that day. Um, and I was thinking about all these other things. So the presenter might've thought I was engaged, but I really wasn't. The next day, she turns her camera off. She's much more engaged though. That, that entire time, that entire workshop, you know, she's writing notes, she's, she's busy um, taking into account everything that's going on in that presentation, but her camera's off. So we have that connection, that association, that assumption that if a camera is on that, that someone's paying attention, uh, but that isn't necessarily true, right? And, and I think we all know that from our own experiences, whether we're attending a workshop, a conference, a department meeting, just because the camera's on doesn't necessarily mean you're present. So another really important reason to allow students that choice, give them that, that ability to, to be present or not. And here's a great quote um, from her article. So diversity, equity, and inclusion, th that model asks us to consider that students might not feel comfortable or safe appearing on camera and revealing their home environments for a variety of reasons, including but not limited to the impacts of poverty on their home environment or the desire for privacy around cultural or religious practices. Your institution very likely has a reference to DEI in your mission statement. Are you leaving that mission when you require students to appear on camera? And that really made me stop and think, right? We, we talk about, we use these terms and we talk about equity um, and inclusion so much, um, but 
you know, in a synchronous session, this virtual world that we're in it during this pandemic, are we still applying those same principles? Something to think about. Thanks for sharing that, Katie. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> I love seeing everyone engaging in the chat box as we go. Yeah. Thank you. And, and feel free to, you know, please unmute if you'd like and share. We, you know, we've gotten through some good portions, some good content, but we do want to hear from you as well. Um, so feel free to go in the chat box and, and share, you know, your thoughts on whether or not we should be requiring students to use their camera, um, what you think about, you know, that, that discussion or, or what has worked well for you in terms of keeping students engaged with or without a camera. We'd love to hear what, what you guys are doing. Yeah, we pulled together just a few things that, a few resources that we're looking at. Um, and we'll look more in depth at those on a Google Doc for like a minute. We really don't have that much time. Um, but here's a few that we've used. Um, some worked last semester and this semester's a GT in Kim's class. And these were just some tools that we found helped the students to participate, whether or not their camera was on, um, on the chat box, things like that. Um, I think we were going to look at the Google Doc next, and maybe we can post this in the chat box as well again. Um, you should be able to, if you're on the Pear Deck, it should be a clickable link, um, which is one thing I kind of liked about that. And then we can just look here. So we kind of wanted to include this just like whole cheat sheet. So we included the language here, um, just our idea ideas about what could be included in a syllabus at the beginning of Zoom, kind of like we did today. Um, and then we just have some, I guess cheat sheet is the right word, <laughs> just a few notes here and there about Google Docs, about Jamboard, and then about Pear Deck, which is what we're kind of using today. Um, I've tried to include some resources there. If you like to watch YouTube videos about resources, there's one video link. For each one and then I tried to include another one to just kind of read about it. Um, we tried to pick things that don't take a whole lot of setup. I don't think anybody has a lot of time um, and so for example Pear Deck can link with Google Slides and so you can just have an add-on that you add to your current Google Slides and perhaps find a way to incorporate students voices a little bit more in the class. Yes, Hannah, me too. I'm going to definitely try to use more polls this semester. Um, just kind of, you know, midway through a presentation just to kind of get students checked in. Mm hmm. Absolutely. I usually start off each synchronous session the same way that we started this presentation, just having everybody jump in the chat box. Um, because it's such a cool way to have this, you know, the ice breaking and then to creating community with the students and they so quickly respond to each other and, and they're creating this conversation before class even starts. And I found that, you know, they're sharing what they baked recently or, you know, they did a triathlon or what they watched and we're sharing recipes. And um, it just, you know, in some ways, my classes over the pandemic have, have been closer than some of my face-to-face -face classes. We've created the, either the same, if not closer community, maybe because of shared stress, who knows, but it's been, um, for me, it's been really successful. Great. I love that we're sharing more resources in the chat box. So I'll mention Remind and then Polls. What are some other things that we've tried in the last semester or two? So I thought Jamboard worked really, really well. And someone else mentioned that. Um, do you guys have any questions about Jamboard or have you worked, it, worked with it? What's worked well? What hasn't? Mm -hmm. Laura, yeah, Google Slides is great, and, and it also works well with Jamboard, you know, which is neat. So, so Gretchen, do you want to talk a little bit about how, um, you know, why Jamboard's a little bit different and why it works so mm -hmm. well for a synchronous session? Sure. Um, I forgot to create a Jamboard without student names on it, so I don't have an easy one to show at the moment. Yeah. Um, 
the thing that I liked about Jamboard is that it's each a slide. Ah, great. Thank you, Katie. I'll pull it up here. We have this perfect. Shows how much I've been looking at the things on Canvas yesterday. <laughs> great. So you have just kind of, I found that it was a little bit simpler, perhaps. You don't have to have all of these buttons and things that you have on a Google Doc or anything else. Students can just go on, you can navigate to different pages at the top, then you can add a sticky note. You could add a picture if you want to, you can add some text. Um, so we used it for a couple things like um, one of the ones we did was to have just quotes from the author and put it up there and then people put together um, their thoughts about what did the quote mean or what questions they had or things like that. Um, I believe that one of the math professors was saying they would put math problems up there and people would kind of post it as they went and say, okay, here's how I think the next steps are. Um, it was kind of a, a way to work together. We've used it both synchronously and asynchronously um, because you can use it. You don't have to have a Google account, though the person who creates it does, um, the students don't. So they just get on uh, through uh, their thoughts. Um, yeah, we thought it was especially fun for um, the best we could do. One of the graphic novels we studied last semester, putting in some panels from the novel and having people kind of look a little bit critically. What, what is she trying to say with her words, with what she's drawing, with all of the pieces that are going together? Um, yeah. And this is something that, of course, works well in, in breakout rooms, it, you know, if it, in a synchronous session. And I've noticed in the past um, semester that students who may not have their camera on for the whole session, the, the whole group, will turn their camera on in a small group setting because they feel more comfortable. So um, that's another thing that you can always consider is, is breaking them into those small groups and they can create that community with each other and they just might feel less intimidated, less pressure. Um, a large group can be kind of intimidating, especially you know with cameras and all of that. So um, you know it's worked well for us to to kind of sneak into those rooms and you see that student has their camera on you're like yes i didn't know you were going to show your camera and you did it this fall breakout group so fantastic um, it helps create that that comfort level yeah yeah i love that yeah that's a great idea and is there anything else that um, y'all have used that's worked well to get students engaged or? That's an interesting idea, Michelle. So she's asking, has anyone experimented with incentives for keeping their camera on? Um, I haven't really, I'll just share for me personally, I think in the beginning of the semester, Gretchen and I just encouraged them. And, and for the first few weeks at the beginning, we'd say, you know, we'd love for you to put your camera on, but it's okay if you don't. Um, but I don't know, has anyone used incentive? Michelle, have you? You're on mute. Michelle, you're still muted. Sorry, I'm having problems oh, with my yeah. mouse this morning too. No problem. Um, I haven't, yeah, I'm gonna try it. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to do it. I don't, for the equity issue, I don't want to disadvantage students that can't or don't want to use their camera for different reasons. So it might be in the form of extra credit that they can also get extra credit lots of different kinds of ways. Um, I, and I, I, Dora and I were in a session yesterday talking about this. Um, I, I feel like, you know, Dora was pointing out students have this social pressure that they're kind of embarrassed if they are the only ones that have their camera on. So there's this, there's a, a strange kind of pressure. It's some students 
feel uncomfortable with their camera on, but other students would like to have their camera on, but only if everyone else has their camera on. And so it's this disintegrating uh, thing through the semester, right? At the beginning, a lot of people have their camera on. By the end of the semester, nobody has their camera on. But some people um, like Kim have a lot of success with keeping the camera on um, and creating that sense of community. And I, I don't know if it's because I'm teaching political science right now and there's a lot of tension um, around the kinds of uh, things that we talked about in class. Uh, I, I'm, you know, trying to figure it out. I, I, and in, in terms of, um, sorry, Dora, um, my success, I actually only had about six to eight students out of a class of, of 25 who kept it on consistently. So my success wasn't so much in having okay. to keep their yeah. camera on. It was, yeah. they still engaged, right? So we used a number of tools okay. um, like Jamboard, like Google Slides, like the chat box and breakout rooms. And so I still felt like I heard from each of those students and got to know them. Even though there were some students, I did not see the entire semester. Even in my virtual office hours, they did not turn their camera on. And that was okay with me. Um, it, it, at first it was difficult, but then I was like, it's fine. Um, I'm sorry, Dora, please yeah. share. Oh, I was just gonna say, Michelle, I think that potentially you've sort of like hit the nail on the head, the fact that you're teaching poli sci. I think that it's potentially possible that our disciplines also affect how much our students visually engage with us. I know yesterday I was mentioning that um, my teenage children in high school don't show their cameras much, but kind of going through this list with my daughter who's the senior, the only camera she, she consistently always had to show her face was in her language class. And I thought that was interesting. Um, and so considering the environment that we've been living in, I wouldn't be surprised of um, kind of just that emotional tension that we all feel politically if students are feeling that extra pressure and that without showing their faces, potentially they feel even more comfortable sharing their opinions in your class. Um, but I, I, that's just yeah. my my initial response with having these discussions with you, not knowing before it was political science, that I really do feel that's, it'd be nice for us to get over that threshold and it would be really great to hear what successes you have with that because I think it would be an exponential success. I would look at your success in having people visually show themselves and their opinions about politics to even be more of a, a positive profound direction and more than just the camera discipline connection. Yeah, I think you approach it that way. <laughs> Say it's our can, first step in civility. <laughs> in my in my field, right? If a student feels strongly about something, um, but they don't want to, they're not sure if they want to say it. If I see their face, you know, I can call on them, and all of a sudden, there's this great, you know, perspective. Um, but it's it's a because it's not just you know, reading, I, I don't know, it's, it's tense right now. So, yeah. <laughs> it definitely isn't. We only have a, just a couple of minutes left. So I just right. know that we have our hands raised and I appreciate that. So Sakina, right. you've been waiting patiently and, and, and Laura, so Sakina, what were you going to share? Um, just really quick. I, for those of you who don't know me, I teach in the communication department and students give speeches. And one of the things that they have to learn about the speech is how to control one's body and face, up to the face. So I play a game um, for the first week, all we do is play games, build community. We don't talk about anything school related. All we do is talk to each other, really. And so what I do is I take half the room randomly and I uh, put them in a breakout room. And then I take the other half and then I give them words. So like happy, sad, angry. And then I bring the other group back and I don't tell them the words. And then I tell the, the side that's there, I'll say, okay, everyone go. And then they make these spaces then the other team that came back, they have to try and guess what face they're making. Oh, this person looks sad, or this person looks happy, or this person looks confused. And I say, why is this important? And we talk about how, um, how body language and how nonverbal communication is 80 to 90% of women's message. So I said, that's how I also use it. So I look around the room, if you're making faces like this or like this, then I know that I need to slow down or go back over something. So not only does it help me in your understanding, but it also gets, you know, me to know, like, uh, you know, I say certain things, if this is something that jammed or gelled with you guys, or if it didn't. So it helps me in understanding, but just to prove, to show how important facial expression is and facial recognition in the classroom. 
love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, last last comment before I, I believe we need to make space for our next presenters. Laura, what were you going to share? Um, I was just going to say that I really I taught an asynchronous class, but I I encourage them to take risks, not required, but encourage them because I did some video and audio discussion boards, and um, and then I rewarded the students. I didn't tell them ahead of time they were going to get extra credit or anything special. I just encouraged them um, to try it out, and then I gave you know just nominal points as just a little extra bonus for taking that risk. And that was the only thing because I have students who don't have cameras. So I can't say, Hey, you have to do this or you should, or, you know, it was just encouraging them to take that, that little risk. So that's what I did in my class this last semester. I love that. And you brought up um, such an important piece that I realized we missed. They may not have a camera, right? So there's that. They might be just using their, their iPhone and maybe the video is not working or it's just too difficult. And they may not have a camera on their computer at home. So equity issues, right? Um, we, we shouldn't require if, if they can't have access to the tools. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, just some, some food for thought. Um, if there's one takeaway that you're going to um, take with you when you leave, if you could just throw that in the chat. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week as you get ready for the semester and your potentially your first synchronous sessions next week. Appreciate all of you. Yes, thank you everyone for joining us. We appreciate the collaboration that we've had together. It's always wonderful. One of our thoughts is that we would try out this tool kind of see what it's like to collaborate and to participate in a session, maybe even without a camera. So maybe you got a little bit of an idea about what that could be like for your students. Yeah, have a nice day. Yeah, everything posted to Canvas, the slides, the cheat sheet, everything. Yeah. So take care, everybody. I'm gonna stop recording. <laughs>